The Call of Moses. What a great story, so important. I want you to first notice the mountain of God. That's what, that's what it's called. Moses is meeting with God here on a, a mountain that was then called at that time the mountain of God. We know it as Mount Sinai. It's also called Mount Horeb. Such an important place. Uh, it's referred to throughout the entire Old Testament and referred back to in the New Testament. Taking the Old Testament in reverse, you see near the end of the Old Testament, you have, you have Elijah, who's running from Jezebel. He's in the northern kingdom of Israel. He leaves there, goes down through the southern kingdom of Judah, across the Negev Desert, down into the land of the Midianites, where we call Saudi Arabia. And there he goes to Mount Horeb, and God talks to him and gives him instructions of what he was to do for the rest of his life. It was right here. When God spoke to Moses, he said, go back to Egypt, bring the people out. And yes, I'm going to take you to the land that flows with milk and honey, back to Canaan. But first, bring the people here, this place right here. I want them to worship me here. What an interesting place. And of course, this story here where God calls Moses at this spot right here, one of the greatest men of the Bible, definitely the greatest man of the Old, man of the Old Testament. And he says to Moses, take off your shoes because this is holy ground. Interesting to see this very important place. We know from the life of Moses that he spent three time periods of 40 years. First 40 years, he was in Egypt. Second 40 years, he was down here in the land of the Midianites. The last 40 years leading the people out of Egypt towards Canaan. Uh, we can figure out why it, the first 40 years took so long, 20, 30 years growing up and then learning to have all the skills. Moses is gonna write the first five books of the Bible. He's gonna write the law. It's important that he had good skills and, of course, the last 40 years, uh, we know that the uh, people rebelled against God and, and God judged them by making them stay in the wilderness for 40 years. What about that middle 40 years? Right there in the middle. I mean, he's down here in, in the wilderness. It seems like a wasted time. I mean, the people back in Egypt are suffering. And Moses is down here just being a shepherd. Why did God take so long to get him to this spot right here? Well, I don't think it was wasted. I think Moses needed to spend this time under the leadership of Jethro. He learned several things. First of all, Jethro was one of those interesting people in the Bible who was not from Israel. Was, you know, he was not a part of the Israelites, and yet he knew God. Job was one of those people. Uh, uh, we have uh, Melchizedek was one of those people. And then we have Jethro who understood. And when Moses stood before the bush and God talked to him, Moses knew who he was. Jethro had taught him about God. The second thing that we see that Jethro taught him was how to think as an individual. In that day and age, like most of the world today, people think as a community. When Israel came out of Egypt, they came out as, as a community. They rebelled as a community. They repented as a community. They did everything, but not Moses. He was an individual thinker. That was important because he could not be swayed by, by situations and everything. He, he had to individually think about God and his relationship. And so it was very important to have a very unusual man and for 40 years. He learned not to think as a community, but to think as an individual. And then the last thing, it took him 40 years living in a wilderness to learn the tricks of the trade of how to survive in the wilderness. Don't forget, he's going to leave the Israelites out of Egypt where 
they had everything they, they, that they needed. They were totally taken care of. They had plenty of water, plenty of food, plenty of grazing ground for, 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 for their animals. Uh, uh, they could grow crops, and they were leaving that area and going into the wilderness. And Moses had to teach them how to survive, how to get by. Very important. It took him 40 years to learn all of all, all, all these things. When he was talking with God, he asked God, well, I'm going to go back, and the people are going to say, God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, what's his name? Very important. And, of course, we know that uh, God said, tell them I am that I am. And the question is, well, what does that mean? Well, when you look into Jewish tradition, uh, they say that the people understood that when they heard that, that he was saying, he who spoke and the world was, he who spoke and all thing existed, that's what that meant. In other words, he was the eternal, self-existent God. He was not made by hands. He was not one of the many things around them. He was the eternal God that created all things. Well, many times people missed a very subtle thing going on here. I believe it's going on. It's so important that Moses obey. God wants Moses to, when I say jump, you say how high. And, and I believe in this first encounter that God takes Moses through a little bit of a test right here and moves him to a position of obedience to God. First of all, he gives him a very simple command. Take off your shoes. Simple enough. But Moses could have said, talking bush, I don't think so. I've got sheep down there. I'm sorry. I'm out of here. No. Take off your shoes. Easy enough to do. Why not? Then the second thing he says is, pick up the snake. Ho, ho, ho. Scripture clearly says that Moses saw that that was a dangerous creature. He ran away. Moses said, come back. God said, come back, come back and pick up the snake by its tail. The snake is saying, no, you don't. Ah, I will kill you. You don't come near me. Does he listen to the snake or does he listen to God? Very important, a very hard step. But when he did it, it was very important to do the hard thing. Then the third thing is put your hand in your shirt. He pulls it out, and it was covered with leprosy. Jewish tradition says it was leprosy that was moving, growing. It was taking over his body. It was a living thing that was, and it was a horrifying experience. You have to understand this was not just a, a little thing. It was a, he had obeyed God and things hadn't turned out the way he thought they were going to. And, 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 and he needed to learn, you obey me. Even if it seems like things don't turn out the way you think they ought to, even though you think I've turned against you, you obey. Now put your hand back in your shirt. He pulls it out, and God says, you just leave it to me. I will take care of it. Three interesting steps, an easy step, a harder step, and then a life-devastating step. Take that back with you. Well, so many little details of these stories. I trust you'll come back when we give you more insights on the story.